Are you looking for an edge of your seat novel? One that will grab your heart and not let go? That will move you to tears, but also leave you feeling uplifted and inspired? Then you are looking for The Jealous Son. It's a contemporary suspense novel that reimagines the story of Cain and Abel in the Bible. I call it a modern day murder mystery. And I'm proud that my book and I have been selected to be featured at this year's Gaithersburg Book Festival. In addition to being a best-selling author, I'm also an inspirational speaker and book coach, helping other writers become authors. I'm also having a writer's workshop as part of the festival at 10.30 a.m. on May 20th. So I hope you'll join me for my workshop, The Importance of Editing. So let's talk a little bit more about The Jealous Son. It starts out from Eve's perspective. The character's name is Eliza, and she's banned from her home in the Navajo Nation, where she's gotten into a little bit of trouble with a boy and drugs. She and her friend Alex Trellis are both shunned from their families. They end up falling in love and getting married and having two sons, Cameron and Austin Trellis. They raise their family the best they can. They struggle financially and with the hardships of raising a family as young parents. But life is fairly normal until Cameron starts to become really envious of his brother Austin. The two boys are in a rock band together and Austin's solo career takes off. So Cameron becomes really jealous of that. He also feels that his younger brother unfairly gets the attention of their parents. And finally, Austin gets the love of Cameron's girl. So Cameron sets out to get revenge and justice. It's a book about what happens when jealousy goes too far. And it dives into contemporary issues such as the opioid crisis, suicide attempts, the loss and grief of a mother who loses her children. Losses that a lot of us face. It also deals with issues that are prevalent today, especially with this COVID-19 pandemic, like anxiety, depression, and just dealing with all of that anger and fear. The Jealous Son helps readers today find a little more hope and faith and courage. It's actually getting rave reviews, including a Kirkus review that calls it a bold, tragic, emotionally exploratory drama. I think that about sums it up. So why do I write contemporary novels that reimagine Bible stories? The Jealous Son is my fourth in my line of these novels. I wanna say my genre of modern day Bible stories chose me. It started out with my book, The Faithful One, based on the book of Job. I like to say that, looking back, God called me to write these novels. I was going through a lot of Job-like crises at the time, many years ago. I was feeling like Job. He's the guy in the Bible that loses everything one by one through a series of tragic events and questions, why me? Like we all do with loss and hardship, but holds on to a shred of faith and God pulls him through. At the time when I heard a still small voice calling me to write it, I was going through a lot of loss. I was losing my marriage through a bitter divorce. I felt like I was losing my kids who were becoming teenagers. I was losing my ad agency business through the recession of the 90s. And I was losing my health to the disease of alcoholism. But just like God pulled Job through, he pulled me through as well. And today I'm married to a wonderful man. We have a blended family of five children and two grandkids and a good relationship with all of them. 
I'm now living my dream of being a full-time author, speaker, and book coach. And I just celebrated 16 years in recovery. So just like God helped Job, he helped me by calling me to write this novel. But I also saw how my novels began to help others as I began to do book signings and, and book group talks. And my speaking then took off. And I started to speak to more and more writers' conferences, inspirational and Christian conferences, women's groups, and so forth. I went on to write my other two novels, The Peacemaker, based on the story of David and Abigail, and The Runaway Prophet, which is a modern day thriller based on the book of Jonah, set in Las Vegas, or New Nineveh. And of course, then my latest fourth novel, The Jealous Son. I began to share how God gets these messages of faith and hope across and confidence and trust in God's plan. In speaking, I also eventually became a writing instructor at Cecil College in my hometown of Northeast Maryland. And I teach courses on writing your first book and then getting it published and marketing it, putting to work my 25 plus years of marketing experience and expertise in communications. And I actually grew up in Maryland, so I'm a native Marylander and I love my home state. I went to Notre Dame Preparatory in Towson. I went to a year at Loyola College in Baltimore and then I transferred at, and graduated from the University of Notre Dame and I became a news reporter in Maryland. I worked for the Aegis in Bel Air, for the Salisbury Daily Times, and then for the Baltimore Evening Sun on the Eastern Shore. And through it all, I gained experience in communications and writing and marketing. So I went on from being a speaker and teacher to actually being a book coach because writers wanted to know how I became a successful author. So I went to share my journey. And today I help writers with editing, proofreading, publishing, and marketing experience through my various services. So I feel like God has opened all of these doors and has called me to help others. I'd like you to visit me on my website, Michelle with one L, Chinoweth, C-H-Y-N-O-W-E-T-H dot com, or connect with me on various social media, such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, uh, and LinkedIn. And of course, you can find me and my workshop on the Gaithersburg Book Festival site. So without further ado, I'd like to do a short reading from The Jealous Sun. Now, The Jealous Sun starts out in the Grand Canyon. And the idea for the book came to me when I was with my husband in the Grand Canyon, thinking about my two older sons who are in their 20s now. They had that sibling rivalry like Cain and Abel. I also have a sibling uh, sister, so we have that sibling rivalry as well, as I'm sure most of you do. So the two boys, I pictured them hiking in the Grand Canyon. Now Cameron, again, is at his breaking point. So a reading from The Jealous Sun. So much danger could lie in so much beauty. Cameron Trellis, marveled at the phenomenal landscape sprawling before him. The sun was slipping into its late afternoon yawn, slanting light onto the rocky cliffs of the Grand Canyon, turning coral into garnet, jade into emerald, slate into onyx, and would soon send shadows into night. Like the depths of the ocean which swallowed ships whole, Cameron mused further, the jagged icy peaks of Mount Everest, 
which beckoned unceasingly to risk takers who sometimes didn't make it to the top and back. A conniving woman who played you and then left your heart shattered in tiny pieces. There is an average of 30 deaths each year here at the Grand Canyon, mostly people acting foolishly and ending up in accidental falls. Cameron had overheard the Canyon Ranger's remark to one of the many tour groups passing through. If he didn't act soon, he would run out of light and out of time. He bent over and picked up a small stone. He straightened and hurled it off the cliff, listening for the pinging sound that never came. They go on to hike the Grand Canyon and Austin stops to look up at the top of a tree where he sees a bird. Irritated, Cameron walked back to somehow divert his brother's attention. The sun was slipping faster now. I'm not going to let him ruin everything, Cameron thought. But as he once again approached Austin from behind, another thought locked into Cameron's brain. From where he stood a few steps behind his younger brother, he could see out over the canyon ledge. Behind his younger brother, and he caught a glimpse of the sea green Colorado River snaking below, looking like a tiny serpent from this height. We must be closer than I thought. His selected destination also hovered above the river, which could only be seen from a few of the canyon walls. Then he turned his attention to the back of his brother's curly black mop of hair. Perhaps now would be a good time. Perhaps this the destination. Cameron looked right and left, making sure no one was in sight. Then he strained to listen for any nearby sounds. He heard nothing save for the distant cry of a hawk. It would be over in a second. Drawing a deep breath of resolve, Cameron slowly inched towards his little brother until he was within arm's length and he reached out his hand. And if you want to find out more, look up my book, which is available wherever books are sold, including Politics and Prose, which is the official Gaithersburg Book Festival store. It's available as well as my other books in paperback, hardcover, ebook, and soon to come in audiobook. Again, thank you for joining me today. And I look forward to connecting with you soon. Thank you very much.